Welcome back to the Garden State Outdoors and Podcast presented by Boondocks Hunting. I'm your host, Mike Nitre. I'm Peyton Smith. Justin Devlin will be on later. He's leaving campus right now, and he'll be jumping on a little late. But listen, we got a big one. So we haven't done any interviews during the year. Um, we've been doing weekly updates, and we we got a special one for you guys. Um, the final chapter in the Free American Mike campaign. And we waited specifically for for this moment. What a return back to the deer hunting woods. I mean, honestly, we, we've talked about it a little bit, you know, in a few episodes. Uh, we talked about it last episode that we just dropped, 138, um, the rut madness with Dave and Kyle. Hell, hell, of, hell of a season. You know, I got I to gotta give it to you. Um, Absolutely. You know. You accomplish one, a goal that you've been after for a very long time, right? Yeah. You've gotten a couple of does, and then you got yourself a really, really nice buck. I mean, just shy underneath Chubbs. And I know he wasn't the buck that you're after, but I think the story and the fact of just how it went down made it just so memorable and you still get to chase that buck you know probably during six day and um winter bow so there's still some time left but american mike welcome that was our longest intro <laughs> well thank you i'm a uh, pleasure to be back and this time we're back uh with a story to tell it definitely the smile has gotten bigger on on mike as each episode I, you know when we're in the summer like he was there but we still fully weren't there. And now it seems like full hunting mode. Like Mike's been grinning ear to ear, um, excited for this one. So how's it feel? Oh man, it, there's no words that can explain how it feels to be back. Like I was telling Mike, we, we talk daily and just, if you asked me like a week ago, how does it feel to be back? I would be like, this is fucking shit. I'm fucking frustrated. The deer aren't moving. This isn't working. You know, you're putting all this time, effort, and money. And uh, if you asked me a week ago, I would have told you that I don't even think I like this anymore. But nah, that's shell bullshit. Um, I love it, man. It was It was definitely earned this year for me. I feel like I busted my ass taking days and days off from work. I'm pinching and scrunching my PTO just to make it out to beer camp in December. Um, I'm constantly out there. I'm sleeping on friends' couches, trying to stay out there to save money on gas. You know, I took a lot of, a lot of uh, I don't know what you would call it, cutbacks, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I drive a freaking Chevy Silverado. That thing drinks gas. So driving to and from my lease property to Jersey city. It's, it's better for me to just stay out there on somebody's couch is what I've been doing. And big shout out to James to opening his doors to me and letting me stay on his couch and shower at his house. And thank God I got an eight foot bed pickup truck to store all the clothes and gear that I needed. But, um, it feels really, really, really fucking good to be back, especially with a buck, some does and a bear under my belt. And uh, this is only the beginning, man. Like, they we're only halfway through the season. There's a lot more to go. Yeah, no, definitely. So, you know, with all that excitement, take us back to, you know, your first moment stepping out. Um, or actually, the day before opening day, like, or the week prior, like, was it starting to get to you or any anxiety, any jitters? Like, you know, take us through the process, you know, right before you know, you, you got out into those woods and were legally around allowed to on your opening day, which was only a week, a week or two weeks after it was exactly 10 days. Okay. So 10 days after our season officially opened, you yeah. know, your opening opening day, like lead us up to that time. So I went to the lodge to stay at the lodge. Cause we threw a big ass welcome back party up there and midnight. I kept emailing prior to that, that day i kept emailing the state like hey i'm supposed to get my license back on the 22nd i want to make sure 
that I don't have to take a test again. I don't have to sign some papers. I don't have to be released or some shit. I want to make sure that on the 22nd itself, I can get my license and go to the woods. They said everything should be loaded on the website on the 22nd. So literally, I'm sitting there at midnight on the 21st, refreshing the page, refreshing the page, and it finally showed up. All my licenses and everything was back. And to see it back in person, I'm not going to lie, I I got a little emotional to think like, okay, I'm fucking back, man. I could legally go out there and do what the fuck I've been wanting to do for the past two years. Instead of just sitting there with a camera in my hand or trying to like tell Sam how to move and you know, now I could do it for myself. I felt like at one point Sam was a part of me because there was for opening day for her, for her dough. I'm like telling her, I'm like, you need to move. You need to adjust yourself. They're coming in from your right. And she's not moving. So, you know, we sit in those swivel chairs in the blind. So I'm legit moving her, propping the crossbow up for her. And I'm like, they're going to walk right in front of you when they do shoot. And that's like it. It got exhausting after a while. At that point, I'm not even enjoying it anymore because it's like, ah, I just want to shoot something. So my first day back in the woods, September 22nd itself, was my dad's birthday. And I dedicated that day to just hunt the whole entire day with him. So whether Doe came in, I'm giving him the first shot. I was giving him first shot from the beginning. And that morning... We had two deer come in, and I have this on video. We had two deer come in, two does come in, and I'm telling him, don't forget your safety. Don't forget your safety. Don't forget your safety. And the deer are like maybe 12 yards in front of us. He clicks the safety. Click. The deer fucking gone. They're gone, bro. They were gone. They heard that safety switch, and they were gone. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, you would have shot one. The other one would have stayed right there. I would have shot. We would have doubled up. I, I'm, I'm like, all right, whatever. So we end up taking a midday break. We go back in the evening, and, you know, you got to shoot a doe first. And we get this freaking four-pointer that just comes in and spends literally an hour and, like, ten minutes in front of us that one of the farmers chased towards us. Because the farmers don't really want deer on the property. And I'm guessing they don't know that we have to shoot a doe first. So they're like sitting there in their tractors watching us, waiting for us to shoot the thing. But we can't shoot it because you have to shoot a doe first. So my first day was dedicated to my dad. We ended up partying hard that night. I mean, I'm surprised I woke up the next morning. Uh, woke up the next morning and I was really late to the woods, but I told myself I've been waiting so long to do this. I'm going out there. I said, as hungover as I was, I went out there, I sat in the blind and, uh, I would say maybe an hour, hour and 15 went by and I had deer coming from the left, deer coming from the right, deer coming from across the field. They were all just coming to me. It was to the point when I drew back on my doe. I'm like, which one do I shoot? They won't stay still. Which one? They're just not staying still. I just chose one that was broadside. I let it fly. And my first thing that I wanted to do was record it. So I grabbed my phone and I Snapchatted it. And that's what you guys saw was the deer running. And she just flopped over right on video, which was pretty cool. And um, from there, I couldn't breathe. Um hyperventilating out the ass then i felt like like i was talking to myself because there's no one there i have no service i'm like i'm like freaking the fuck out i'm like i finally did it i'm trying to send you guys snapchats it's not loading i call my mom she doesn't answer i call my dad he doesn't answer i call my sister they don't answer i'm like what the fuck is going on and um it was a bunch of mixed emotions and i recorded majority of it just so i could watch it again and like To be honest, I was still really paranoid because when I shot the deer, I walked up to it. I didn't even touch it. I walked up to it. I looked at it. I recorded it. And I went to my truck and I started filling out paperwork right away. I didn't touch the deer. I didn't take a picture with the deer until I filled out paperwork. I was fucking paranoid as shit. And even then, I was in a zone that allows you to shoot two at a time. And James is telling me, like, yo, sit there and shoot another one. I'm like, bro, no. I just want to get this deer and go home. I just want to leave. I feel like a warden's going to fucking show up and give me a ticket for something. Like, hey, I don't know. I was just fucking traumatized then. I just wanted to get out of there because I, I I did what I went there to do, and that was it. It's like, okay, time to go. I'm, I'm good to go. Let's let's fucking go. And that was my first go. 
I mean, and, if you're you're hunting on your lease, right? Yeah. And that's something that I've always been told growing up was just like get in and get out, and don't spend a lot of time hanging out anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's a good move to begin with. You just spend as less, as, especially when you get your own like land to manage. I think it's important to spend as little time in there as possible. So yeah, and as soon as I did, did leave, a good thing, probably. As soon as I did leave, deer were back there like I like nothing even happened. That's 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 funny, dude. This this excitement, this energy that's pumping, like Mike's ready to run through a brick wall right now. Uh, <laughs> I can so, feel the pain at the side of my head. Right. <laughs> um. Did you throw up on this one? Did you I ever... gagged a little bit. I gagged. A okay. Little bit. I think I think I remember you. You told me that so much adrenaline. Yeah. It was a yeah. mixture of can't breathing, and then like I started to cry and like your stomach started to feel a little mixed up that's like uh i told you guys um the day i took my dad out i don't know if i was nervous i don't know if it was something i ate i have no idea first time i've ever shit in the woods i i i left him there and i'm telling him i'm going to the truck i'll be right back i go to the truck bro i did what i had to do i'm like let me go back in the blind I go back and I'm walking to back and forth, back and forth, bro, back and forth. And um, I'm sitting in the blind. I'm like, damn, dad, I'm sorry, but I need to go again. So I run back across the field, back to the truck. And oh, man, my stomach was in knots that day. I don't know. If, I don't know what it was, if it was like excitement or I have no idea. So you, you were going to say something. Load out we talked about. I was going to say it's not my first time, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is no. that it? <laughs> Dude, the, uh, you need the, the pack loadout video you got to put the the charmin or the dude wipes in your in yeah. your pack they need to be no, I literally, in there. Yeah, we literally just <laughs> talked about this but, uh, <laughs> thank god i i keep i keep wipes in my bag for sam so so wipes. so another uh, another first i'm gonna give it to mike another first finally because <laughs> this has been a joke that we've been talking about probably for the last how long has freezer fillers been been up and running 2019 2020 ish all right so that this this whole pooping in the woods thing has been like this joke that we have because mike has and he always he goes i don't know how you do it i just like i just like you just like just go and i'm like yeah like when i gotta go like i just gotta go and like I, i've never understood i don't know how, how you, you don't. i think the harder question would be yeah avoiding avoiding it entirely <laughs> that's the, i think the more challenging part <laughs> And it's like, but you know, I don't have any funny, problem with that. <laughs> that the happen. funny thing is, you know, and Mike can definitely tell you every time he gets to PA, like the fresh air changes his <laughs> bowel movements. Like it, it does still. And like, I, I just like, I still like, I'm going over in my head, especially when you have like an all day sit. I'm just like, there, there's like, how, how does one not go to the bathroom? Like, no, nah, I, I could I, hold it. <laughs> I, I could hold it. But that morning, nah. I was not holding it. There, there was something wrong with me that day. <laughs> oh, our listeners are probably like, "What the hell is going on?" They're talking about pooping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, all right, so we go from you know starting out. You you started a little late, so you didn't have that much time from your first doe to black bear. Right. Yes. And I know your main focus, and we talked about this on the, the last episode that we did together. A hundred percent your focus was on bear. Now we're 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 at time, you know. You you put in your work, we we all know what, what you've done. If you, you don't know, listen, you just go to check out American Mike's Instagram, his YouTube, prior podcast episodes. And Mike, from the very beginning, has talked has talked about his love for black bear hunting, and not just black bear hunting, his love for um, the meat too. All right, your bear season, incredible. Let's go over that hunt right now. I mean, a hell of a hunt, and I believe we did a bear episode where you did talk about it. For yeah. but for those who did not listen to that episode. Let's let's go over again. Your first black bear ever. Let's get it going. That that first black bear was um. Uh, one thing I didn't mention on the other 
episode, which I'll mention in this one, was I feel like that that black bear was sent by my grandmother, who I recently lost uh, last year. And uh, the reason why I say that is because my parents went to go visit her graveyard that same day on Columbus Day because uh, she passed away October 5th. We were all busy. So they went to go visit her on that day, on Columbus Day. And my mom says she's standing there at the graveyard and she's talking to her mom like, well, send your grandson a bear. He's out there for a bear. Send him a bear. And by the time my parents got back home, they got the call that I dropped the bear. And it it's the the cool thing is each year Jersey's bear tags that they put in the air is a different color. And my grandmother knows I love the color blue. My grandmother calls me boy blue. Hence, that's my license plate. It says boy blue. My Jeep is blue. You get what I'm saying? So everything's blue. And what what kind of pulled on the heartstrings a little bit was when I went to the check-in station and the tags that they put in the bear's ear was blue. It was like, holy Jesus. shit, this this was fucking meant to be. Yeah, so I give <laughs> uh, I give my bear hunt. Screw all the work I put into it. I feel like my grandmother sent me that bear because, like I said, we were sitting on the floor and I just told Sam, I was like, you know what? Let's stand up right now. It's about three o'clock. Let's stand up. These bears are about to start moving. Let's get all of our stretching out now. So let's just stand up. And I feel like if I didn't stand up, I probably would have messed up that, that hunt because when I stood up, I'm standing up back in the tree. I'm stretching. I'm stretching. I'll look over my shoulder and there's this big ass bear just like scratching its back on a tree about maybe 80, 90 yards away from me. And I'm like, Sam, big bear, big bear, big bear. And I'm like, you need to sit. You're in my way. You need to sit. I'm like, I'm shooting this. You need to sit. And she's she's like slowly sitting down. I'm like, sit faster. You need to sit now. Sit now. So she sits down and um, everything's on the GoPro footage. Uh, you, I literally turn on the GoPro and you could see the whole camera frame is just turning around because this bear is coming in from directly behind me. And um, the bear comes walking in. And we sprayed ourselves down with glazed donuts. So I'm pretty sure he's coming into the glazed donut spray. And I'm using the tree as a barricade. I'm peeking out to see how far he is. I'm moving back. I'm peeking out to see how far he is. And um, comes in maybe about at 50 yards is when I was like, okay, let me poke out a little bit more. And it just starts walking directly towards me. Head on, walking towards me, nose down, just coming our way. I'm like, oh, shit. Let me draw back. I draw back. It's still walking. It's still walking. I'm saying to myself, I think I shot it at like a solid 26 yards, like right under that 30 yard mark. And um, what was funny was like, I'm like, for deer, you go, man, I'm like, how the fuck do you stop a bear? So I just I was just like, hey, and it stopped. And I just whack, let it fucking fly and watched it run and just died. It was it I was did find cool. it. That man will also stop a bear too. I'd stop. That's how I stop my bear. But the video that you have of, and I was watching the video that that Mike put on Instagram of, of him shooting the bear. I'm like, oh sweetie, this is how he got his bear. And then just the him just going, hey, just like totally took me by surprise. <laughs> just like, and it's it's a great harvest. It's a great shot. But I just like couldn't stop chuckling at the at the how you stopped it. Man, uh, just an absolute perfect just perfection there there isn't much to say you know we we did a full episode on it and everything like that about the bear hunt but you know you get that done so now you're on a roll you're you're on a high right now you know bear season finishes up you know we're in that close to that mid october so we're we're, we're getting to go time bucks are gonna start moving firing up when did he appear on your camera so the, the buck that I'm after till this day, he appeared on camera October like 29th, right before okay. Halloween, kind of. He showed up on camera at nighttime, and I'm telling myself, eh, it's nighttime. What, what picture? A nighttime picture means nothing to me. Um, until a day, a buck daylights, that, that buck is basically irrelevant to me. When a buck shows up during daylight, I'm like, okay, now I can go and chase him. So... It was the night that was, it was a full moon night. This is how I could remember. It was a full moon night. I don't know if it was a 
Saturday or what, but it was extremely hot that day. It was like 80 something degrees. And I'm sitting in my hammock in the backyard swinging and I'm fucking like, ah, this is nice to be home. You know, it's, it's a beautiful day. Ain't no deer going to be moving. James, James is out hunting with, I think he was with his, his wife that day, or if he was hunting by himself, I'm not sure. But, um, he's like, why are you home? You need to be in the woods. I'm like, bro, enjoy bird watching because that's all you're doing. You're not going to see anything out there. Dude, I get tact cam notification. I look at it and it's the freaking monster that I'm after, bro. He's standing right in front of the camera with like about nine does around him. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I sent it to James. I'm like, yeah, you were right. You were right. My bad, bro. <laughs> and um, once once he daylighted that from that day, I want to say I hunted like five days a week after this guy. I would legit take off like Monday, Tuesday, come to work Wednesday just to avoid that write up. Because if you if you call out three days in a row, you get written up. So I'll come into work, leave the Thursday, Friday, hunt the weekend, come back. I was working like one day a week, constantly, constantly. I wrote it down in my notes, the amount of hours that I put into this deer and what days he showed up and where I saw him, what he was doing, whether he came in for food, whether he came in for does. I was writing it all down in the notes and legit the day before I shot my buck, um, I think I took a picture of like all the stats that I put into this deer, whether it's the money that was spent on bait or the apples and gas and toll and everything. I just had everything listed and I'm like, you could see it in my face. Everyone's like, damn, yo, it looks like you need a nap. I said, I need more than a nap. I need a vacation from this because at this point it's like mentally straining because you're after this one freaking deer and he's just not giving you what you want him to give you, which is a perfect shot. The one day I saw him was the one day I expected not to see him. Every day you go into the woods, you're like confident, like this is the day I'm going to shoot something. This is the day. And the one day I go in there and I'm like, eh, I'm not going to see nothing. Let me just sit anyway, because I had my cousin with me. He wanted to come out for the experience first time. You know, he just wanted to come out for the experience. So I'm like, okay, we're just going to sit, bro. If we see something, we see something, but I'm pretty sure we're not going to see something. So my cousin goes, Dude, there's deer in the upper field. I'm like, really? I look. I'm like, all right. I, I pay it no mind. There's always deer in the upper field. They're just never in my field. So I'm sitting back down. He's sitting where he could see straight out the window. And I'm sitting where I could see, like, I always send you guys the Snapchat of the trailer. There's a trailer exactly 157 yards from me. So I'm sitting watching the trailer. Then he goes, dude, I think this deer has antlers. I'm like, no, nah, no way. Let me see. So I'm looking. I left my binos in the truck, right? I'm looking, I'm like, give me the crossbow. <laughs> I take the crossbow and I'm looking through the window. I'm like, I'm looking through the scope as a, as a magnifier. I'm like, holy shit, dude, that's him. That is the buck that I'm after. So now at that point, I'm like, let me rattle at him. I rattle. He looked over, but he's just like with these two does, just slowly freaking cruising through the field. He's not trotting after them. He's just cruising through the field and i got this on video also and i probably saw him for a solid 20 minutes he walked all the way to that trailer i got a good video of him hitting a scrape and he just followed those does right down the driveway and left the property and i'm like god damn it and after that after seeing him in person i haven't seen him for a while and um even the morning when i went out there to go and kill a, a buck the only confidence that I had going out there in that morning was the guy that I met at the lodge that kept telling me that I need to go and hunt mornings. This time of the year, mornings are crucial. Crucial. Those yeah. cold, frosty mornings, as much as it, listen, I, I love hunting in the morning. It's a love-hate relationship. You know, we were talking about it the other day. Mike, Mike literally texted, texted me, he goes, is there something wrong with us? And I go, yes. I go, the fact that we're, we go out in cold weather, rainy weather, snow, whatever, to chase animals all day, th there is something just wrong with us, right? You were, I could easily, you know, I'm not going to say what else I said, but I could easily be in a warm bed right now. Like, 
relaxing, sleeping, you know, saving tons of money, everything like that. But no, like we love what we do. We're obsessed with it. Um, and getting out in the morning, I love it. I love watching the sunrise. I just, there's, there's nothing else about it. Like, I just love it. Deer are moving, especially this time of the year. Like they are moving a lot in the morning. Um, especially if, a war- if you have a warm afternoon, like I think it's even more crucial to be out in the morning if a, if the afternoon's going to be, you know, a little, a little toasty and everything like that. So um, the your morning, I will never forget. You, I, I, I hunted the day before and it was my weekend of work and I switched my days to psych and I was like, all right, like I need to get out there Saturday, like Saturday, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out there, hunt all day Saturday. On it all day Saturday, wake up for work on Sunday. And the minute I step out, I'm like, damn, was, this would be a good day to be in the woods. And I'm telling you, maybe like maybe five minutes. And I think five minutes might be pushing it. I got a Snapchat from Mike with the bloody air or no big buck down BBD. And it was the, the you know, and I think it was either picture or video. And I think it was shaking a little bit, but like. The minute he sent that, I'm like, oh my, I'm like, I knew it. I knew it. He, he, I was like, but damn it. I I was literally saying the night before in the tray, I go, I hope someone kills. I hope Mike kills the day before so I can actually go out there and see this goddamn deer. Like I wanted to go track a deer, you know, up where Mike was hunting. I haven't been up there in, since the fishing season in that area. I love being up there, but like, I, I was like, I want to be up there. I want to finally, you know, I was there for Chubbs. I got to go see Chubbs, um, but I, did, I didn't get to see this one, unfortunately, because I was at work. You got to see both. Of, you got to see both of these, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen. Yeah. So I've seen I've seen both of both of those deer. I, did, have, I didn't get to see this one. Unfortunately, of course, he kills it while I'm freaking working. But, you know, so. Go over that story with us, you know. The guy tells you you need to be out in the woods in the morning you know and he doubted you he said you weren't gonna do it and <laughs> yes. you did <laughs> so so i was at the lodge from i think thursday night friday night saturday and then i killed him on sunday morning yeah so thursday night when i got there he that guy his name is steve shout out to steve um he wasn't there thursday night but he showed up friday night so friday night james came over with his family and you know we're having dinner and steve's sitting there and Steve is the one guy, Mike, you've been up to the lodge. There's pictures on the table of Steve every single year on opening day. He's killed a buck for the past eight years. Opening day archery in PA, he kills a buck. So Steve is like the club leader, if you would say. And um, so James goes, so what's the secret to like killing some big bucks up here? And he basically says, you know, it's persistence. You got to know your right location. You got to know where you're going. You know, you got to know the land. He's like, he spends all year round scouting the land, even though the season's only open for a couple months, he still spends as much time as he can into the woods. So the guy, so the guy goes, you guys hunting tomorrow morning? And I'm like, morning? Nah, but tomorrow, yeah, I'll be out there for sure. I don't know about morning. And he goes, you know, when you guys asked me what's the secret, you know, morning hunts are part of it. And I said, ah, like that was a Friday night. So Saturday morning, I did not hunt Saturday morning. I went out there Saturday evening and I actually had a really good sit for a Saturday evening sit. I saw a buck like this was my first real like rut activity that I witnessed, which was pretty sick. I mean, this buck was on this doe's tail nonstop, running, running, running. And she's running in a circle, and he's running in a circle. And I'm I'm like, oh, man, maybe that might run into my field. Nope, they didn't run into my – and he's just chasing her, chasing her. And a little buck is looking at him like, what the fuck is going on? But that was pretty cool to see the, the rut activity. And um, Saturday evening, we go back to the lodge again. James comes over for dinner. We're sitting there, and – James, the topic of what you eat when hunting came up. And I showed him some pictures. Like, I, you, Mike, you know, I fucking eat like a full course meal out there. I had a picture of me sitting with a bowl 
of venison steaks and beans and rice in my blind. And I'm like, you ever had one of these in the blind? And he's like, you remember when you asked me what's the secret to hunting big bucks? Yeah, I don't think venison steaks are going to make that happen. So we go to talk, we go to talk about uh, if we're hunting tomorrow, if we're going out in the morning. And I'm like, yeah, I'll go out tomorrow morning. And he's like, no, you're not. You, you're not going out in the morning. I was like, all right, watch, watch. So I even ended up telling James, I was like, all right, bro, I'm going to bed early. You know, I'm, I'm going to go out in the morning. Now, when I woke up that morning, um, I get up. I'm trying to put my socks on. And I catch the onlyest fucking cramp in my leg. And my concern is like, damn, I'm already kind of late. I need to get this cramp gone so I can get the fuck out the door. <laughs> I'm trying to put my sock on. I, it was to a point that I was like, fuck it. I'll just go outside like this. And I, once it, once the cramp goes away, I'll get my sock on. I'm I'm packing my bag with a cramp in my leg. And dude, it, those Charlie horses that you catch in your sleep are terrible. So I get my bag packed. I walk outside. I felt the chill in the air the frost is on the on the truck you're walking in the grass and it's just going and just grass you know it's fucking cold and um i get to the lease and the sun is already peaked like it's probably like 10 minutes into shooting light and there's a doe in front of my blind so i tried creeping up she already fucking ran away she ran away and i sit in the blind and i'm sitting there and I'm debating whether to turn on the heater or not because it was still a little gray light. I didn't want that the the light from the heater shines into the blind and deer could possibly see me. So I'm sitting there in the cold. I said, I'm going to give it half an hour and then I'm going to turn the heat on. If you look at my story, whoever was following me, the first snap was like, here, deer, deer, deer. I swear to God, I hit send. I hit send. And this deer that I, I wasn't sure what it was at first because like I said, it's still... A little grayish out there uh, you know the when the sun starts heating up and the fog is lifting um i just see a deer down by that trailer again and it just peeks its head out and <clears throat> i'm saying to myself i don't think it's going to come this way i don't know if it's going to come this way anywho i look back down at my phone to see if the the that snap loaded the the here deer 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 video because out there i don't have good service so I'm refreshing it, and then I look back up, and this thing's just like beelining it straight, straight into the field. I'm like, holy shit, it's coming this way. I grab the bow, and like as it's getting closer, I'm looking at. I'm like, oh shit, it's a buck, it's a buck, it's a buck, and it's not giving me a chance to think like, is it the buck that I'm after? I'm like, nah, the buck I'm after is a little wider, but I'm like, yo, he's got some tall fucking tines, dude. I draw back, and I'm like, meh, 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 like like I had to yell that last meh to stop it. It stops and it's like quartering towards me because it's looking at my in my direction. I said, "Man, I, I haven't missed with these arrows yet." I, I'm thinking he's at thirty, but maybe he was a little bit closer because I feel like I hit him a little high when I looked at the shot placement. I don't really like to shoot that high. I like to shoot a little lower, especially hunting from the ground. You don't want the the blood to fill the cavity and then you can't find the fucking animal. So. I whacked him, and from there, I, I did, like, a rookie mistake of just, like, holy shit, I'm freaking the fuck out. I'm grabbing the phone. I'm Snapchat. Instead, I should have, like, listened, sat there, possibly peeked my head out the window to see where he went. I don't know nothing. And at this point, like, a brick just formed in my stomach because I'm saying to myself, I don't know if it's a good hit, if it's a bad hit. The, I, I was just freaking out. I'm Snapchatting you guys, like, holy shit, buck down. I shot a buck. And, um... From there, it's like, okay, go. I look at the arrow. I took a snapshot of the arrow. I said, I'm leaving. I'm just leaving the woods. I'm leaving completely. I left. I'm waiting for Rupa at the doghouse, at the doghouse, getting food. And Rupa shows up. I'm like, okay, cool. Now I'm feeling a little bit more confident because someone's with me. I don't like to track deer by myself because me, for one, I cannot find a speck of blood for nothing. Rupa goes there. I'm like, Rupa, here's the arrow. There was like no blood at all where the arrow was. And it did not bleed a lot. Like, you, there was very little s small specks of blood. And Rupa was able to freaking, like, move those grass blades to the side. And, like, blood, blood, blood. And he just went into the thicket, maybe about 20 yards into the thicket, and just dr died behind this tall bush. That if I was to look, I wouldn't see it from the opening. I would have to walk around the, 
the dried bush to go and see the buck. And um, Roop was like, yo, he's right here. I'm like, huh? No, he's not. I'm thinking Roop was fucking with me. I'm like, no, he's not. I wouldn't think that he would have died that close. He did not run that far. I think he honestly ran like a solid 90 yards, maybe under 100. I don't feel like he passed 100 yards. But uh, I double lunged him, so he did not go that far at all. It's just the fact of uh, that high shot. I feel like that that high shot, I didn't get really good blood out of him because um, when did I was gutting him, I did get a clean pass through, yeah. When, um, when I was gutting him, we had let that deer, I had let that deer sit for probably like a solid three hours waiting on Rupa and eating breakfast. So when I was gutting the deer, I mean, like chunks of blood clot was from inside of his cavity was just already solid inside of there. And I'm like, dude, Rupa, look at this. So I'm like pulling out handfuls of just clunks. And uh, yeah, that, that, that was long. about it. Yeah. But when he turned, when he turned and looked at me, because he's coming in and his his kicker's on the right side. So from the left side, you're just seeing a fucking four pointer. So from the right side, as soon as he turned and I saw that kicker, I started to freak the fuck out. The kicker is what got me. I was like, holy shit. And um, I, I have to give a big shout out to Shaq for building me those arrows because this is my third deer with the same arrow. Uh, two clean pass throughs. One of them was a spine shot. And um, yeah, Shaq, Shaq knows his shit when it comes to building an arrow because if it wasn't for the confidence of that arrow, I probably would have been like waiting for him to turn. But I didn't wait at all. I was like, you know what? I got this. Real quick, what what's the difference? What so what did he do with these arrows compared to Alas? Are they heavier? What or they everything's the same? It's just built so, like so. What what is it? I personally can't explain what he did. He was like, "What are you looking to get done with them?" I said, "Well, honestly, man, before I've been sh- I've still shoot those two inch severs from um sever, yeah, those two inch mechanical severs." And I told him, I was like, bro, every deer I shoot, yeah, the arrow goes in it, but it's, I'm not getting that clear pass through. It'll get jammed up on the other side. I want mm. a clear pass through. And he's like, all right, say no more. I got you. So I know he put uh, an insert the, weight, probably. I don't know what the like fuck a, he did. You have a collar on, probably. Yeah, a little bit. No, he doesn't. Collar. He doesn't have a collar, but he probably, no. they probably put a, a heavier insert in, probably he, would be yeah. my guess. He told me he tuned my arrow to my bow because he asked me how much poundage am I shooting and whatever not. He asked me for the broadhead specs and um, he said he tuned the arrow and then he he's like, all right, let's see, let's just, you know, go for it. Fucking go for it. After I shot the first doe with it, I was like, holy shit, this guy knows his shit because I've never had a clean pass through with the two inch, the two inch fucking mechanicals. Even on a doe? Never, never. Wow. I've mm. never had a clean pass through up until Shaq did whatever the hell he did to the arrow. And, and, and you know, a lot of momentum with those mechanicals, um, you know, just from the opening force. But, you know, my guess would be, you know, putting a little weight in the front definitely, definitely would help. And it's something that I looked into a little bit this year, but didn't get a chance. To the FOC to down the road. that. Yeah. Yeah. Playing that FOC game and getting yourself a little bit more weight in the front. I think. Uh, did you change spine? Arrow spine? Go no, same, same arrow all. spine. The only thing he did different is um he put like a three degree curve on the fletchings and oh, okay. that's the only thing I could physically see like, that he did differently. Did you uh what GPI do you shoot? Do you know? I I personally don't this know. Is, this is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna do after the season. Mike is gonna get Ash Shack if he wants to come on to the podcast. Okay. We'll get him on and we'll do a whole complete like arrow breakdown build. on yeah. on Mike's arrow and then just like build and, and go into his questions because I've talked to him before and um I talked to him about getting um some stuff done and then to get potentially getting an arrow build done and I just ran out of time and I have so many arrows mm-hmm. already I want to go heavier arrows um for next year I already decided that. So I guess Mike kind of sold. That earlier yeah, yeah. Year. Mike just sold me on um on Shaq. So uh, and I think it's his slogans like what should have should have gone to Shaq. Should have went to Shaq. Should have yeah. went to Shaq. Yeah, um. Yeah. So yeah. Well, Mike said because he's a part of Backdam 
Productions, correct? Yeah. All right. So I'll put in the word, tell him to come on, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll get an episode with him on. Uh, Mike, me, you, Mike, Peyton, Justin. If Justin's not a big Arrow tune guy, like I don't, Justin, you, I feel like you're not like oh, as I love that stuff. big into like, and it could change because this year you've definitely dove way deeper into archery hunting than probably years in the past but you know so you haven't gotten that like i call it nerdiness because i'm such like i love like the specs i like broadheads like broadhead and flight of arrow and building custom arrows and everything like that like i'm kind of obsessed with it and even like you know pete and i pete and i talk a lot and i know justin knows his stuff too about like terrain and you know wind and that's what know, i was just gonna say thermals and like everything like that like that's another nerdiest nerdy part that like i've started to dive deep in paint and started to dive deep in knowing our acorns like i actually got right here um from one of from one of the oak trees so it's not a white, white oak. oak no no it's, it's not, not a white let me, oak let me oh. tell you no so it's uh it's what i found today on the scout um so i use this app it's called picture this so it tells me okay. every type of vegetation. Like I take a picture of anything That's and it will tell me, it'll tell me what, um, well, yeah. And I was going to bring it up, but I completely forgot. So I, I think use it for work all the time. Um, do you, well, yeah, yep. you need to, you, you did a terrible job. Cause you just be getting poison. ivy like freaking crazy. Also very um, true. But... Oh, okay. So this is a chestnut Oak. Okay. Um, so but I use that all the time and you can use it on trees and everything like that. But that's how much we've gotten into like the nerdiness. And we can go over that on another episode um, and, and stuff like the, that. That's the nerdiness that I like is stuff like that. When it comes to gear, like that's not even just an archery thing. That's an anything um, thing. The only thing that I would say that I get nerdy about is ammo when it comes to duck and goose hunting and maybe turkey hunting. But not even nerdy to the fact of or, or to the amount of how people are nerdy about arrows and stuff like that. I just... I'm more nerding this about the oh, strategy of everything else than it. the actual product. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I love yeah. the strategy and the e-scouting, but when it comes to that, that's the nerd engineer in me. So that's the, that's the, the day job. Oh, out. which, which, so <laughs> we're going to definitely fully, cause you know what? So you guys all have, you guys have the same platform. Tell them what you told me about, about this platform. Uh, Pete and to, oh. to Justin. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the engineer in me came out, should have came out earlier and, you know, recognized that I'm not a fan of the, I've decided this year of the Hawk Helium platform. No. Um, and it took a hard, hard lesson learned um, to realize that it's just, it's not a good design. It's, um, I, and I recognize kind of what it's doing and it's like trying to be the, the tethered, the predator platform. But where it kind of really fails, and it's the only platform I've seen on the market that does this, and it has like a cammed out uh, where you have to tow it in. Mm -hmm. And it has like six teeth, but you'd be lucky. I mean, I don't know if it's made for like putting in the fork of a tree. That'd be the only situation where it would work. But you're only getting the front two teeth in when you tow that that platform in. Otherwise, it's just a rounded edge. And you know, those that those, is true. Those last four teeth aren't ever going to bite in. So I don't know what they're now. They're not doing anything there. But the problem is, is if you put any side force while towing in the platform, like say you step off the stick a little too far, you can roll it. And because it's just it just makes it real easy for it to roll along that that curved edge away. Yeah, from the no, tree and you're. You're 100 percent right, because I've experienced that out. several times. So, yeah, oh, yeah well, right. I experienced it, too. Oh damn! And, uh, damn. and I, and I went he down. almost fell out. <laughs> I went down. Really? And uh, I uh, I had my lineman's belt on, and I've changed up the order of operations after this, to where now I I put my tether rope on before I tow in the platform. So I'll be at that top stick. I'll throw my my tether rope around. I'll clip it into my bridge, and then I still leave my lineman's belt on. But I'm because I use it's I just leave the the tether rope real loose right and then i use my lineman's belt to kind of get the leverage to tow in that platform but i slip didn't have the tether rope on lineman's belt caught on the top stick and so i basically fell so, from foot to to chest but you slipped off of the platform or you slipped off of the so stick? i was towing in the platform but i wasn't oh, okay like straight over top because i was stepping over from the stick and it just was like a slight angle and it kicked out away from mm -hmm. the tree 
And so I just kicked out and my foot caught on, you know, my knuckles sliding down the tree. Just I didn't go down fast because the lineman's belt does slow you down a good bit, but I still caught my arm, my the lineman's belt and my arm caught on the top stick and and I was just kind of wow. dangling there until I could kind of heart must have, his heart must have been yeah. jumped and going a million miles per hour. And it's like really didn't. I was like, oh shit. Once I got on, I was more mad. I was like, that was a ton of noise I just made. So but, yeah, but. that was um Brooke, before we get back to um, you know, Mike and everything. That was the hunt. You had the morning hunt. I was out at another spot, and that's that when you said afternoon. I should have I should have just hunted from the ground instead of getting up was it was that that same day well yeah because no. mike never has issues he's always on the ground he never has those those problems <laughs> i should have haunted from no that was a different day uh and i did have some trouble finding the right tree to get up and setting the sticks that well, mike justin i was talking about myself <laughs> you know, i don't know why uh, i don't know why i said mike <laughs> why the fuck did i do that <laughs> i just realized that I, I i said mike and i'm talking about myself my bad but yeah, no, I mean, that was a different time I had this last weekend was a weekend of bad, bad, bad luck getting up in the tree. But yeah. that instance, I would, you know, I've been carrying it and I was just insistent. And I was like, I need to find a tree. And I went from tree to tree to tree and made all this noise where I got into this spot so quiet trying to find a tree, you know, dragging my stuff down, you know, from tree to tree where I should have just I had already found a great ground setup where in reality, I was just for, because I had the saddle, I just decided I had to get in the tree. Even though I'd shot that deer that's on my wall at home, you know, from the ground in this same spot. So it's just just because you have the saddle and you have the mobile hunting platform doesn't mean you have to use it. You know, and that's the that's the pro of the the mobility of it, I think. Yeah, is yeah. it it's not a it's not a bear to bring just bring wherever you go with you. Definitely, definitely agree. Um so Mike, back to back to you. you <clears throat> so walk- I um I did the math on um, all the hours that I put into that book that I'm after. And uh, this is going to be a little sneak peek. But when you post this on Instagram, you got to blur it. But it could stay on YouTube. So people have to go and watch your video on YouTube to see it. Um, This is the book that I've been after. And I calculated it. I put 39 hours into this guy sitting there waiting for him. I can't hear you. I said he is wide, but look at his tine. That is, is it like it's very twisted th- up? Does it right? Yeah, it looks, it looks really reason, like. So now let me give you a side preview of what he looks like. My dad's got a deer in the garage that's like that. He's yeah, extremely like that. wide, but if you look like at that. him, if you look at him from the side, you're like, what the fuck? That is not the same deer. You're right. Hmm. You see that? He, he, it's he's, like he he's got really up interesting out. He's got really interesting. Let me see that one more time. He's got really interesting antlers. A little lower. So did he bust? Some, looks like he busted something. I don't know what he did, but I am pretty sure he will be bigger than Chubbs, body wise and antler wise. He's really? Big. Yeah. What I saw did? him in per- dude. When I saw him in person, bro. Holy shit. He's he's way bigger than the buck I shot. What did that really? buck you shot? You you said you had a little competition going on Instagram on who could get the closest. What was the uh what was what did he measure out to be? Uh roughly scored at 122 and a half. So that was two deer. two less than Chubbs was 124, right? Yeah. What did what was his weight? Chubbs? No, uh this this buck. Um when I went there, the butcher was having problems with the scale. I'm going to say he was more than this, but the butcher scale said 155. No way. Yeah, I think no he was way, way more I don't, than I don't that. think, yeah, no, not 155. Was he field dressed? He was field dressed, yeah. 155, though, that, mm, that's tough. Yeah, it's still probably, I'd still probably think he's at least 20 pounds heavier than that. Yeah. Unless, that like, the dressed. only way, he could be 155 after the rut. You know what I mean? I, I believe that it after then too. when, you know, Chasing I believe it after that. If he's all rutted out and everything like that. And he's just worn out and hasn't really been eating much. I would believe that. That'd but probably put him at like 190, you know, before you gutted yeah. him, 185 or so before you gutted him. Yeah. Which, 
seems about right. He was he was big. But but the one this one after seeing him in person, bro. Oh my god. Yeah, I also massive. feel like trail camera pictures just for whatever reason they just really don't they don't do it, them justice. I, it's just I, they it, always. Well, it, 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 I not know, saying that that I didn't look it. like a great deer, but I just always feel like they don't look as big in the trail camera I'm, picture. I'm gonna say it depends because we we yeah he looked so there that's he looks better. That's a much and better I, angle. Yeah, and yes. I think it angles play a huge part, and you know mm-hmm. Justin can can tell you. Justin's buck 100% looked a lot oh, yeah. bigger on camera on camera than it he, was he in, could have been argued yeah. for yeah like a 145 to 150 inch deer and I I you know just like when we're taking angles with the pictures after with the deer you know there is an angle where Justin had the deer and it was like okay now this looks like the deer that was taken in the trail cam picture but when he had it on a different angle they they look like yeah, two no, they completely totally different. different they look yeah. like two different deer and that that back and I do like that back side of the because I think that is probably the best picture that you can get of a deer um is their back and you're like okay now you could see his everything in his full he looks a lot bigger um Right there, he yeah, yeah, yeah. is, bro. He is. I don't know. I don't know if he's injured or if he's got uh, blue balls from not busting a nut or something. But he walks with a limp. Mm. Blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, and to listen, I saw Chubbs in person. So if he's bigger than Chubbs, Chubbs he's, was a really I, I, big deer. Yeah, I put him way over Chubbs. He's definitely Chubbs was a Chubbs was a really big body deer, deer and he had thick mass too. Yeah. Um old old deer. Yeah, that was a uh that was a hell of a deer. Um but you know, so so now you're you've you've gotten the success. You've is it everything now and we kind of talk about everything you dreamt of, you know, these past two years, like all the feelings, even from the frustration, <laughs> it, from the frustration to the anxiety to, you know, just spending all the time in the woods. Is it everything like you remembered it was going to be and kind of what you hoped for? Yeah, it's exactly how it is, because it's like, um, you know, I get I get a little frustrated. I get a little emotional. And then I'm like, you know what? This is what I'm used to. Like, this isn't the first time. It's just it's been a break. And even when I say it's been a break, it physically and mentally, because before I I remember sitting out there in a freaking hoodie and I'm good. Right? Now I went and bought all this winter gear. I have a freaking buddy heater with me and I still feel cold. I, I don't know if it's because I got soft within the past two years or you're what? getting older. You're no. getting older. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You're what getting the older. <laughs> But for me to feel cold cold. out there, I'm like, what the fuck? This is not it. This ain't it. But um, it's just, it it was definitely mental, like really fucking mental. I was listening to your podcast when you had Kyle on, and Kyle said how he drove back home for like the first three hours in a dead silence. And that's me leaving the woods sometimes. I mean, like no radio station, no nothing. I'm just listening to the silence and just like, I'm in my own mind. And it's bad because you, why is it that it's something that we love to do having this effect mm-hmm. on us? Yeah, I run into that too. You know, it's like I'll go in the morning and I'll be listening to a big podcast. I'll listen to Hunting Public. It's like I got to do my homework. I got to get tuned up going in. Then by the end of it, it's like I need a break. You know, yeah. Listen to with Shane Gillis, you know, throw the, the Shane Gillis on, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, God, it's like, I, it's just, See, I need a break to think about it. There, I I wish with with my mindset, I don't going into hunt. I either have to listen to music or I listen to a hockey podcast. Right when I'm in the tree, that's where I'm li- I'm listening to a podcast or I'm watching the hunting public. Like I'm a huge like I love watching the I love hunting while watching hunting. It is the like I don't know like it just gets you'll me listen such to a podcast into, in the tree. I I listened I like I do don't like if I'm there for a long time like I I catch up on podcast episodes but I learn so much um watching um like the hunting public and just watching uh, I'm a big fan of like Growing Deer TV or uh, Bow Hunter Die or somebody like that so like or looking up you know 
you know, thermals and, and wind and, you mm -hmm. know, looking up so I can just better understand, um, cause I'm still learning about thermals and everything like that. So I can better understand some, or like, if I got a question, rabbit hole like, deep. yeah, if, you know, if whatever pops into my head that I will, I'll think, okay, like, let me look this up on YouTube. Let me try to read up or I'll read something and like try to read an article or something like that. Um, and then like notes, I take a lot of notes while I'm in, in the woods. I'm going to eventually release that, like my full like list i mean i'll show you guys a little bit here but like and i have a like a post recap which i didn't do the last hunt but that's because they're nothing is it and that's like hunt 30. so it goes mm. all Damn. the way this is every single hunt Jeez. um this whole entire year and i it goes from the date the time i get like set up like where i'm fully completely set up with the camera and everything like that um i'll say the first hunt my method of hunting so if i'm in tree stand saddle on the ground whatever and then i go humidity you know um like the if it's foggy if it's raining slight drizzle the wind the mile per hour the moon um pressure dew, like everything i go into like everything and then it goes to okay what happened what did i see when like and if i don't look at my my watch when a deer pops out because sometimes i just forget i get like okay like where do you like you know i'll that's why another thing i will review the film like okay there's a timestamp. so this deer came from here and then i'll check did he come from the north south east okay what's over there did it, so like everything is written down and i review this and like i literally and i'll read this like i go through it i'm like okay and that's how i understand like each hunting place i hunt mm -hmm. and that's how i learn the area and then i like okay like I, a cam needs to go here you know and I'll, I'll put a camera there and then shit it's not working like i'm not getting any pictures do i need to do change you, something uh, else record notes in onyx it's like when i'll drop an onyx pin sometimes i'll go in the notes there and uh, i'll uh, i'll leave like a, a kind of a lengthier descriptor sometimes yes but the the problem i have with that because i'm usually when i'm finding stuff like I'm either scouting or I'm doing something where it's like, all right, let me put this pin. Cause sometimes I'll put a pin and then I'll go back and I'll edit it there. Like if it was a rubber scraper or, or something like that, I, that is something I, I should start doing more is using on X notes. I just get sometimes so like wrapped up on what yeah. I'm doing because I'm doing no, multiple things. That. So I'm not only scouting, but you know, everyone knows now we're, we're, we got, you know, Instagram and YouTube and everything like that. And same thing with Mike and same thing with, with everyone here. There's a lot of filming and, you know, Pete and Justin and Mike, they've seen me film like Peyton. I know this is your first year really watching me. Like everything is kind of filmed and it's big film mm -hmm. guy. Yeah, I'm a huge film guy. I love editing, but it's it's research to go back and look at and like, OK, like I listen, I still have all of last year's stuff on my laptop. I still have. I still have to put it on the hard drive, which I should probably do. And I'll how put many, it on the hard drive. How many pictures of poop do you have in your phone? Of all a of lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. funny. I have a lot. I'm like, what, what, lot of what normal of fucking human phone. being has shit in their phone? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> a lot of, <laughs> a lot of poop, a lot of poop, a lot of like, if what do you think some rant for though? I don't think I have any pictures in my phone of deer shit. Like, I, I have deer shit, bear shit, some well, weird uh, long video looking of, shit. Uh, of shit does on Instagram. Dude, I don't <laughs> like I take so much because like <laughs> everything, everything to me is Intel. And then like and I know Mike asks a lot of questions, too. So like I know like if same thing, like if I go to take a picture to send like Justin, I have stuff from turkey season from like two years ago that like <laughs> when I go through my stuff, I'm like, damn, like. Like, hey, Justin, what's this? Is this a turkey feather? Is this like, why the fuck do I have this still on my phone two years later? So I'll go back and delete it. But like, same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, you know, it just, it helps me. Because sometimes, sometimes you're going through stuff and you're scouting and you take pictures. I'm somebody who goes back later when I get home or if I'm in the stand and I'll like, re I just review stuff. I'm like, okay, like, where was this? And, and everything like that. And you can match it up onto onyx where you can actually put it into onyx and everything like yeah. that so um pretty pretty useful we that that was a rabbit hole that we just got down onto right there and hey that was like the second time you missed it justin we were talking about pooping in the woods earlier that's the second time to this, this episode yeah. we, we, uh, i'm not gonna yeah, this, into that but this, i'm experienced in that one <laughs> and, yeah, we can't circle back <laughs> we can't circle back a third time <laughs> um so but yeah, keeping good notes is important. It's something yeah. I got to do better. I have an article that I and wrote I, 
uh, on my I, website like earlier that I talked about this, you yeah. know, when I and I, I think it is important. And I, I do like what Mike said that and that's something I want to start doing is with the Bucks and especially target buck is okay when do you came when he came in you gotta and get a log of the trail cameras like the calendar of them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and you get know on his, get on its schedule yeah you know w- what was the win that day and i do now love that tactic cam and i and the moultrie both cameras that i love using huge moultrie fan now um they actually once you put the the zip code or the area code in it gives yeah. you all the intel on like exactly what the win was the pressure that day like everything like that so that actually makes it a lot easier to take in notes now and to to put it all in one system and then you will you will eventually see a pattern like 100 percent. if you go through that notes you'll see a pattern you i think you'll you'll be able to kill that deer um a lot easier so mike we know you're going to kill that one soon you know as long as he's still around and and alive um are any plans now with so you got another bear you're going to get another bear tag this year. They're doing two, which I was very surprised about. So you can, if you killed one in the fall, you still can kill one in um, December during six day. If I'm yeah. if I remember correctly. Right. Yes. Um, so you, you, are you, tar- are you, you targeting a specific size or anything no. that walks by if well, I'm, within a I'm, reason? I'm not really even like chasing bear if i see one or have the opportunity to shoot one then i'll do it but a bear with the gun just doesn't really tickle my fancy that much uh i'd rather a bear with a bow like comes bow season next year for bear again i'll be all gung-ho yeah, at yeah. midnight fucking digging through the garbage again so until then i'm not really you know i got a bear this year i'm happy about it what i what well, the next thing on my hit list is a turkey with justin that is on my hit yes, list. Sir. I've never, I I never killed a next. turkey. I've never killed a turkey. I need to kill a turkey. Yeah, after and, the you're, day and you're not after big, the day that big you of had, a bird yeah. hunter. I'm not a big bird hunter. No, no. I don't really care for Turkey's a, a different style of, a, but, of bird hunting entirely. Yeah. Though. I want to be able to say that I did it. Beast. I just want one and done. That's it. I don't care what it looks like. I just want to kill a damn turkey. That Call it a day. I don't know if maybe if I after I kill the first one I'll be like oh this was cool I'm gonna do it again but uh, I just want to be able to say that I've done it. Are you gonna do a bow or a gun? On the roof? Gun. Gun. Yeah. What um, are you saying, Peyton? So you hear that first gobble on the roost? You might uh, yeah. it might change your mind on. Well, he had done. Mike, yeah. Mike went. Yeah. I got oh, a yeah. great experience, and that's what makes me want to do it even more. But yeah. uh, I just feel like I don't think it'll be an annual thing to be like yeah I'm going up now. Justin's really fucking dedicated and knows a lot. Like he he amazed me with the shit that I witnessed that day. Yeah, it was a good day that you guys had. It's a shame that we never pulled the trigger on that day, but I've never been so close so many times and not pull the trigger in one day. Yeah. But it was fun. Three three close calls. Three real day. close calls. Yeah. The two were like couldn't get any closer, but yeah. Um, and I think we have an episode on that during Turkey our Turkey Talk segment. Yep. Um, yeah. With that's American sweet. Mike. Week A, we hunted on that Friday, yeah. so that would have been like April like 29th or something like that. Yeah. So if anyone wants to go check that episode out, um, I can't remember the exact episode, but it's in the Turkey Talk segment. So just scroll down till you see. I Turkey think it was Turn. yeah, week week A Turkey recap or something like that. It was it? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so because your yeah. your boy shot that turkey as well. Um, and then any, I know you wanted to tag out so you can go for PA rifle. Is that still an option or a I f- nah? I feel like no, because PA Rifle legit opens next uh, Friday, Friday, like that's Saturday after Thanksgiving. And a week to me is not enough time to go out there and like, you know, scout the land. We have over 900 acres of private property up in PA that we could hunt, but it's also shared with other hunters and majority of the club all hunt PA Rifle. So I feel like I don't have enough time to get that done. My my next goal is to just kill a deer, buck or doe, with the muzzleloader. Um, muzzleloader does open up right after Thanksgiving, so that that's about it. Other than that, I'm looking forward to beer camp, and that's going to be the wrap of my season because I feel like it's going to be a cold winter. We're going to have yeah. lots of snow, and once snow comes, I'm on lockdown at work. There's no more taking time off. There's none of that. So I'll be stuck at work. So I'm looking at six day basically being the end of my season. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which we do need a cold, wet winter and snowy winter, which we talked about also last episode. We'd like to see that come along this year. But um, boys, any, anything, anything else? I mean, what a what an episode. Mike brought the energy. Justin, you missed it. No, I came he, in started, late, I know. he started this episode. He like I, I, I said it earlier. This man was ready to jump through a freaking brick wall. He should be. I I mean, it was it was absolutely incredible. Um this this was a fun one. So we are gonna release this one um next not this Saturday, but the next Saturday. So we have um who is dropping this Saturday? It is Team Wacken Wackenstack, I believe it is, um with Levi. Great one, Mike. You're going to be interested in that one. We talk a lot about Africa. And then, like, this one's a, like a – he hunts deer and everything like that. But a big part of it was talking about South Africa and his hunts in South Africa and the different animals. It was really cool, a different different type of uh, style. Then we went into some alligator uh, hunting um, and some different different types of hunting like that. We did talk about whitetails, if I remember correctly, as well. And then we're going to have our – next rut madness part three thanksgiving episode which we got to come out with a theme for thanksgiving justin you're going to make it monday yeah yeah i'll be around all right we we got to come up with the theme for for thanksgiving and everything like that mike if you got any suggestions let us know because every like holiday because we're doing this for the rest of the season so every holiday is gonna we'll do a theme where christmas is easy christmas you know that that's that's the easy one to get done we could do ugly s- sweaters we could do like just so many different things so um <laughs> and then so yours will be saturday after thanksgiving this this episode is going to be dropping um we hope you guys enjoyed this episode mike brought it mike is back free american mike campaign is officially over done with He's back. He's free. You know, he he's back to doing what he does. What two two does down? Three two does down. Two does down. Buck and a bear. A bear. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully he'll have a turkey later. Another deer. Um, whatever deer, buck, whatever. I'm at. I'm listen. I still think Mike will get two more. I think Mike will have at least two more deer before the season ends. Um, come on, and... first you're back November. You're telling me that you're done. We will know that that's not true. No, nah, yeah, and honestly, this is for for my first year back. I watched a lot of deer. I fucking passed on a lot of deer. Yeah, I was like, kind of surprised. This, the same thing. The same thing that happened to you happened to me on the property that we hunt. It's like <laughs> uh, eleven other guys, I think, and um, I know someone hunts on the mountain behind me. And this little forky comes in, and I'm recording him. He's on my Instagram. He's the one that was eating an apple or something. And he comes in, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not shooting this thing. He walks off, and I, I swear to God, I just heard whack, like, about 20 minutes later. I said, there's no fucking way. There's no way that the guys that I'm hunting with would shoot something like this. I'm like, there's no way. I'm like, May- maybe a, a tree branch fell. Maybe they shot something else. I don't know. Man, so where I hunt, I could legit see any car entering the property or leaving the property. And this white pickup truck is driving away with the fucking same deer on the little deer rack in the back of the truck. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I say, I mean, it's meat in their freezer, sure. But I'm like, what the fuck? We're on private property. I I would understand if you're on state land, you know, those bucks are going to die anyway come six days on state land but you're on private property you could have what the fuck yeah those, those deer are gonna be like listen six day is a whole different type of <laughs> six day anything is game it could be a little button bucket it's it's freaking game on on six day um but man mike thank you any any last words um for uh, you one, one thing one thing i wanted to say was um I felt the love all of, all around and I got family that listened to your podcast and this is to them. All my friends and family like being out there. I don't know if it's the fact of me being out there for so long constantly at different times that they missed me or what, but the support that I got from friends and family this year was like you I felt the love. I really felt the love from everybody, from friends, family constantly checking in like, "Hey, you good?" Did you shoot anything? How'd your sit go? Best of luck, you know, sending you positive vibes. And that all 
came together and uh it, it helped it helped with this harvest of this big buck and uh and like like you saw Mike last night we we killed a few bottles He's celebrating this buck uh I actually killed the buck on a religious holiday so I wasn't able to even eat part of it because you can't eat meat or drink alcohol on that religious holiday so I had to basically pretend like it didn't happen that day and then wait the next day and then okay let's celebrate and that's what we did that's great yeah though listen they're drinking white henny guys <laughs> they were drinking that white henny and eating uh some venison you had the venison taco heart which looked amazing i legit buy that shit by the case bro <laughs> i love heart i uh i Dumb, that, hey that uh fair heart, I yeah and it came out really good i think uh I learned this trick. I think I, I commented it was just like soak the heart in salt water, and it really just kind of changes the flavor a good. Same bit. thing with the with the liver. Soak it in yeah. some salt water, and you get Until all that, that water yep. runs clear. Yeah. Yep. Mm, good, good, good fact out there for for anyone who to try that. I mean, I love heart. I can eat heart. I've I've had duck heart before when when Justin when that's we what I was just gonna say I'm, yeah. I'm gonna eat some duck heart after this Tommy's gonna make us uh, the ducks that we shot yesterday and the duck heart is possibly the best part of it all like it's a great it's about a bite and you know yeah a, it, a it's bite of food but like, yeah, it's how so those small. waffle heads nice I mean it all depends like these were pretty fresh like they seem like they just showed up good plumage good mm -hmm. everything so like when they're fresh like that. If they don't live in the salt water down there for too long, then they're not that bad. But uh, it all it all depends on how long they're down there. It seems sometimes Leo. you get them and they taste better than a mallard, and sometimes you get them and they taste like a merganser. So it's like let's uh let's let's finish this episode and then we'll we'll talk about the ducks. I don't want to run run this too all long. Right. So you know we'll see you guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you guys next time.